Recently in the news, Donald Trump's residence was raided by the FBI. How does this event relate to the way that we consume media, you and your kids, every day? Keep watching to find out. Every time an event happens, uh, we get news about it through the trusted resources that, that we look at online or on television, uh, on our phones, just uh, coming to us, giving us the facts. But the problem is, is that every person has a moral of the story that they're infusing into uh, their recollection or reporting of the event. If we look at some of the news agencies that are reporting on the Donald Trump uh, raid, uh, it's a very different picture that is painted depending upon where we're getting our information. Websites like Alternet, CNN, more on the, the left side of the aisle, uh, we have headlines like, Analysis explains why the GOP's disastrous week is about to get even worse. Uh, or paranoia and conspiratorial thinking grip Trump world following Mar-a-Lago raid. Uh, this is a site that says that they are about balanced and journalistic integrity. Uh, these headlines are full of assumptions and value judgments. Uh, CNN writes, attacks on FBI come before America has the facts. And full list investigations and lawsuits against Trump. The information that they choose to highlight uh, shows just the values and the moral of the story that they're trying to convey. In the same way, if we go back to Fox News or, or go over to Fox News, former CIA director shares tweets suggesting Trump's execution over docs. And the Daily Wire reports uh, Trump scoffs at the hoax report FBI Mar-a-Lago raid sought nuclear docs. So, as we look at these stories and we look at the moral of the story that each of these headlines is trying to convey, we can see some of them are conveying this was a justified raid, there was danger, nuclear codes, you know, all of these things. Uh, some of them are saying, look, people are calling for him to be killed uh, that were behind this. You know, what is the motivation of the people that ordered this raid or the people that are suggesting this raid? Every single person that is putting news out there has to regulate their own preconceived notions. And that was at the heart of journalism, is that we're supposed to put our own conclusions aside and really only report facts, not conclusions. And that is somewhat lost in all of journalism uh, at this point. But how does this relate to our kids and the way that they consume media? How does it relate to the way that we consume media? When I'm watching something, I want to be engaged. I want to be on guard, in a sense. You know, the Bible talks about taking every thought captive. And when we receive ca uh, thoughts coming in, we want to take those thoughts captive and interrogate them. What is their, what is their reason? Wh who is feeding this to me? Uh, is it based on truth? Is it based on facts? Do I have all the information? You know, these are good questions to ask. And there's questions that we ask when we're adults. But when you're sitting with your child in the living room and your child is consuming content, we have to be aware that they are not developed with critical thinking in the way that we are. Creators of content know this. That's why children's content is one of the areas that is targeted most by the moguls behind big media right now. Because one of the things that we are understanding is that there is a value push in these areas. And just as I desire to uh, create a, a certain set of values in my children and want to impart that onto them, so do they. Who is creating content is just as important as what the content is saying. So as parents, when you're looking at the diet of your child digitally, what they're watching, what they're being influenced by, it's not just important for us to be able to watch shows and digest them for content. That is an important thing. It's also important for us to look at who the content creators are. Whose voice are we empowering through our choices of consumption. Because we want to be aware of who we are putting up on pedestals, who we are empowering to continue to create messages that go out into our society. Don't just affect us, but also affect the, the people of the world around us. I want you to think about the difference between the way your child consumes content and the way you consume content. As I stated before, we have cognitive development where we know there are liars in the world. We know that we have to be on guard from people who are communicating to us. Sometimes even people we know and love uh, have bad information and, and give us 
uh, something that's not true to consider. So it's important for us to understand how we distinguish between truth and lies. And sometimes when we're talking about digital content and the diets of our children, we're so consumed on what they're consuming that we forget to teach them to discern, to teach them that every piece of content that they're viewing and consuming is created by someone with an agenda. And what we need to do is make sure that that person is trustworthy. So it's important that we teach our children the difference between trustworthy people and people that we have to question, people that we have to be on guard with. And we do that by looking at the Word of God and teaching the truth of God. And, and we know that as believers, but how do we communicate that to our children? One of the ways that we do that is exposing them to lies. And I know that sounds crazy, right? We want to expose our children to lies. We don't expose our children to lies and let them believe that they're true. We expose our children to deception and how deception works so they understand how to discern. So as you are putting together the diet for your child, keep that into consideration. When do you want to expose them to the real world that is out there? When do you want to equip them? Because we're not just here to protect our children, we're here to prepare our children. Hey, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. We're doing our best to help you navigate the landscape of media and the assault that's coming after you and your kids every day. You are making a difference by sharing these videos, liking, subscribing, helping us get the voice, get our voice out. So thank you for that, and we hope to see you in the next video.